Hi, I'm Jeremy Kaplan, and welcome to Wonder Tools. This post is about making the most of AI. And I'm starting with an image that I generated with Dolly 3. And I want to walk you through some of the way I'm thinking about AI and how it can be most useful for us. First of all, there's a lot of hype around AI, as there has been around so many different technological innovations in recent years. From iPads saving journalism back in 2012, more than a decade ago, through the claims about blockchain and Facebook's instant articles, and so many other technologies that failed to live up to the hype ultimately. ChatGPT has had a huge amount of attention paid to it, and I would like to suggest that we're actually just at the beginning of seeing its real impact. By way of context, I'm uh, director of, of teaching and learning at the City University of New York Graduate School of Journalism, and I direct the Entrepreneurial Journalism Creators Program, where I help journalists create new ventures. And some of the things we're thinking about as we work on strengthening the journalism ecosystem is finding ways to make our work more efficient, to focus on the more human aspects ourselves and to delegate menial tasks, repetitive tasks, some workflow tasks to AI. And that's part of my um, focus in, in coming to this topic. Also, I find AI can be helpful in some aspects of working on Wonder Tools, not writing the posts themselves, but in some cases, translating my ideas when I'm brainstorming out loud into a summary of some thoughts I'm thinking about that I can then use when drafting a post or making a transcription of an interview I've done with someone I'm speaking to for a Wonder Tools post that I'm working on. So if you haven't had experience with AI before, basically in some, it's just helping computers act a little bit more like intelligent humans. That's really ultimately at the end of the day what AI is all about. And in terms of our practical uses of it, it's about automating the things we do repeatedly, like transcribing text, it's about augmenting our capabilities, for example, by suggesting 10 different headlines we could use for a piece of writing, uh, and also for generating new kinds of images, new kinds of poetry, new kinds of music, all sorts of new things that it can generate through advanced algorithms. We as humans can then work on those things, develop those things, improve those things, personalize those things. AI will help us in journalism as well as in a lot of other fields, including education, including really any field that involves work with computers. It'll help us analyze information, find outliers, find patterns, summarize, synthesize information. It will help us with writing, with editing our writing. It'll tell us words we've used repeatedly, ways of being more concise, being more efficient, ways of addre addressing or adjusting uh, grammatical errors or improving our word choice in a sentence that's wordy. It will help us generate multimedia or even edit multimedia, like taking out background noise, background hiss in an interview, or adjusting the color of a video recording that's slightly off color. It'll also just help us with productivity. For example, by giving us a, a summary of a long meeting we've just been in with a list of tasks we've committed to, to completing. And it's really useful in a variety of domains for gathering information from disparate parts of a document, for example, organizing that information, telling you this is the stuff you've actually said you're going to follow up on, finding meaning in that information, like summarizing a transcript again, or in um, helping us understand information in a different language by translating it for us automatically. So in addition to summarizing, it can also really be helpful with ideas. We can ask it for seven different questions we might ask someone we're going to speak to, or ideas for elements of a subject we just haven't thought about considering, or fields that are connected to the topic that we're writing about that we may not have considered, or ways of framing a particular point that we might not have considered. So there's so many different ways it can help amplify our ideas, augment our ideas, challenge our ideas. And one of the basic interfaces we use these days for this is chat. And the tool that has been become synonymous with this, although there are alternatives that I'll mention, is ChatGPT which is, allows us to use natural language to query an AI engine. And it allows us to generate things, generate language. It's not specialized in knowledge as much as it is in language. So it doesn't replace a search engine, for example, as I note in this post, um, but it helps generate examples of something that we're trying to come up with when we're teaching or when we're writing or when we're thinking about something. It helps us explain a concept at different levels 
to a second grader, for example, or to a graduate student, or it helps us come up with analogies, which are sometimes challenging for us to think about, but can help us understand something or explain it to someone else. And then finally, it can help us with perspectives. It can help us understand how someone who has a vision impairment might be impacted by this, or someone who can't hear how they might be able to respond to something um, that we're trying to communicate, or um, just someone from a different culture, different language background, different age group, any kind of uh, perspective that we may not have at the moment, it can help us um, gather a little bit of that insight, or at least can introduce that other way of thinking to us, which can be helpful. To get ChatGPT to do what we want, we have to prompt it effectively. Prompting is essentially giving it simple instructions that are clear, concise, and specific. And to do so, uh, we can use a method I call a prompt pop method, which is essentially giving it a persona, give it a role to play. So for example, you're a podcast, act as a podcast expert interviewer who has uh, experience interviewing lots of different kinds of people and has great expertise at generating creative, interesting, unique questions that are helpful in eliciting interesting answers. You can give it a specific objective, like give me a list of seven potential questions I could ask on this topic in a, in, in a concise way that might be fruitful for a podcast interview I'm preparing for, for example. And you give it parameters, like uh, I'd like potential headline suggestions for this, but make sure they're no more than six words long, or make sure that they are simple, clear, and understandable for a child, if this is something we're writing for a child. You can give it whatever kinds of constraints or parameters that are important for you to ensure that the result is what you're actually looking for. In addition to generating text responses, ChatGPT can also now generate multimedia. It's multimodal, meaning it can generate images for us. And the images I used in this post, actually, and in this presentation, uh, were generated by ChatGPT with a tool that it has called Dolly 3. And in addition to generating images, it can analyze images. So I've up uploaded images in different languages of different kinds of scenes and asked it to analyze those images to give me some information or some insight on those images. And finally, it can speak. So if you want to have a conversational interaction with ChatGPT rather than typing things with your thumbs, it can speak and, and actually have a conversation with you. Just as you would type things out, you can actually have a conversation with it. It can listen to you and understand you. And if you're practicing another language, for example, which I've done with it, it can uh, help you improve your foreign language speaking skills and foreign language listening skills as well. There are alternatives like BARD, which is Google's chatbot. It has some advantages like being able to point out uh, references. It can identify in its answers sections where there are web sites that back up that information and where there aren't, which can help reduce the extent of hallucinations. And it can also connect to some of your other Google uh, material. It can create a spreadsheet for you, for example. Poe is one where you can create custom chatbots, um, which now are something you can create in ChatGPT as well with its launch of custom GPTs. This basically allows you to create a tailored bot specifically for a particular purpose. For example, I created one to help me improve my French. Um, you can create one that, um, for example, helps you with gardening questions that you have. I created one that will explain things like a second grade teacher to simplify things. And I also created one to do six word summaries of any kind of concept. It'll summarize that concept in six words, whether it's a play, a movie, a book, a complicated scientific concept or whatever else. And then there are personal bots um, like Pi, where you can have a conversation, you can practice for an interview you're preparing for, you can practice a difficult conversation you're preparing to have, and it will just give you a friendly conversational experience. It's not intended to replace a therapist or replace a friend or anything like that. It's just a bot that you can kind of practice something with. And in addition to those alternatives, we also have Bing AI, which is um, powered by OpenAI's ChatGPT engine, and also a great option for free, and one that can not only answer questions, but refer you to websites and even generate images for you. Quite useful. Google's own search engine now is incorporating generative AI. So this is spreading not just to the specialized tools, but to the most basic web tools like the Google search engine. And this enhances the search results and allows you to get more information right away from 
um, some generative AI results that appear now in Google search results if you're part of this lab uh, beta experiment. Perplexity is one additional one that I'd recommend. It provides not only AI-powered search, it also gives you little summary capsule results on your search. Um, so it's a great kind of balance between the search power of Google or Bing and the summarization capability and quick information response of ChatGPT. So with that, uh, I'll just make a couple final points. We're in this new era with uh, words on screen. There's been the pre-internet era with Microsoft Word and WordStar, WordPerfect, if you remember all those programs, we moved on to Google Docs and then to interactive documents like Notion and Coda. And now we're on this new AI era of words on screen. I think it's really a powerful moment of transition and we can do so much now that we couldn't do previously. And that introduces all sorts of new potential, which I'm excited about continuing to write about this year in, in, um, in a bunch of different ways, talking about how Google Docs is incorporating AI, for example, how tools like Lex.Page are made by writers for writers to incorporate AI capabilities in word processing more effectively. And other tools that I love, like Craft.Do are incorporating AI in, in all sorts of new ways. Notion uh, is incorporating AI in all sorts of new ways with a new Q&A capability. So, so many different ways in which these tools are incorporating AI, and WordTune is another one I'm really interested in that's incorporating AI as a writing assistant to help you with editing your writing, not replacing you, but supplementing your work and supporting you, assisting you. So those are some of my thoughts about uh, AI and some ways in which we can make it, take advantage of AI, capitalize on AI with our writing and our editing, and a range of different tools that we can use for it. I hope that's been useful. Um, thank you for reading Wonder Tools and watching this video. And I'd love to hear what you're interested in finding out more about as I continue writing about AI and sharing insights and experiments over the course of this year.